The word of God in Lamentations chapter 3 says this, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Thanks for logging into the Bridgend Gospel Hall site. In these verses, the prophet Jeremiah brings before us four great truths about God, four attributes we might say. He tells us that the Lord is merciful, that the Lord is compassionate, that the Lord is faithful, and that the Lord is good. We want to focus on the second of the four attributes of God. We want to think about compassion. Five times over in the book of the Psalms, the psalmist tells us that the Lord is full of compassion. So what is compassion? The dictionary definition of compassion is this, a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate the sufferings. Never in all of human history has there lived a more loving, caring, compassionate man than Jesus of Nazareth. His very presence in this world is evidence of that, that the Son of God should become a man and share in our human experiences sin apart. That the eternal God should come into time, that the Almighty should know what it was to be weary, to hunger, to thirst, to sigh, to groan, to weep. That the one who is the resurrection and the life should experience death, that he might fulfil the words of the prophet Isaiah, he took our illnesses and bore our diseases, that he might bear our sins in his own body on the tree is ample evidence of his love and compassion. I want to think for a minute or two of some, about some of the people that the Saviour met and situations he encountered here on earth. When he was confronted with a tired and hungry multitude of people in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, listen to the words of the Lord Jesus. He said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. Not empty words because he fed them. When a man with the horrible disease of leprosy came to him in Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, a disease which barred the man from contact with family, Friends and normal society. Now that's real social distancing. We read, And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him. He cleansed him. He healed him. He met his need. The Lord Jesus met a widow woman on the way to the cemetery to bury her only son in Luke's Gospel chapter 7. And we read, And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said, do not weep. Again, not empty words, because he raised the boy to life. His compassion, his care, his love is unquestionable. So what about today? What about the unprecedented situation that we find ourselves in? A virus that's spreading, a death toll that's rising. What would Jesus say? What is his word to us here and now? In Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, in the first five verses, some folks came to him looking for answers to some of the disasters of his day. There were a group of Galileans who were slaughtered when engaged in worship. And the Lord Jesus himself mentioned 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Please listen carefully to the words of the most loving, caring, compassionate man who ever lived. You'll read them in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13 and verse 5. I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. You might not have expected a response like that from a caring, loving, compassionate man. Harsh words, you might say, but no. Words of truth, spoken because he cares and is compassionate. Let me ask you, is it wrong to warn of impending danger? A danger that we all face. A danger which must much worse than catching COVID-19. That is the danger of dying without Christ. The danger of meeting God with our sins unforgiven. 
Because die we must, and meet God we will. The greatest certainty of life is death. It affects 100% of the population. The Bible says we must needs die. 2 Samuel chapter 14 verse 14. And we will meet God, for it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Romans chapter 14 and verse 11. We cannot avoid this. We cannot escape this. But it's important for us to understand that death is not the end. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. And as is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Death does not end all. After this, the judgment. But the wonderful thing is, the truth of the gospel is this, that Christ died. His death was an offering. What did we read? So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. He died for us. He died to bear the judgment, the punishment that we deserve. He died that we might be forgiven. He died that we might be in God's heaven if we trust and believe in him. The good news is that the Saviour who warns, he also welcomes. His words are, come unto me. Let me finish where we began in Lamentations chapter 3. The last verse that we read there in that little portion, this is what it says. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. So my friend, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. I plead with you, please, please listen to the warning that Jesus gives and be sure that you will find a welcome if you come to him in faith and cast your all upon him. Repent and believe the gospel. God bless and thanks again for listening.